Good morning, New Calvary Church. Another week has gone by, and our lives are filled with adjustments. And I trust that you have been enjoying opportunity to spend time with the family, to spend time with God, to grow deeply. I was so blessed this week when I began to look at some of the texts that I received from our young adults. And one of the texts actually shared with me an individual that has been looking at words and understanding the meanings of words. And I began to realize that a new normal has begun to set in her life. What an amazing thing when we begin to realize that, yes, change is taking place and I'm in the middle of change and I'm adjusting to that change and I'm making adjustments that's absolutely transforming my life. Church, I hope that as we go through the many things that are taking place, we will not lose the opportunity to absolutely let this time that we are away from all the hustle and the bustle, all the stress of life, all the things that we made important, that has gone away from us and a new norm has begun to emerge, I hope we are making the best of it. When God led me to use the word book of Nehemiah to start our new series, I realized that it is an incredible case study of how people went through change. And as they went through change, there were certain things that God did and God used Nehemiah, God ministered to Nehemiah. And as he ministered to Nehemiah, Nehemiah began to enable the process of change. And God used him in the most powerful way. We have been in a century of change. Over a hundred years. And during this hundred years, we went from the horseback to flying in planes that have incredible speed, in trains that go as fast as planes. We've been in a world where communication, which took time for people to hand carry and became a runner to send messages, to today we instantly communicate with people on the internet. Change is part of our generation. Change has been part of this last 100 years. And those changes have been phenomenal. And we have seen computers from a big room to end up in the hands and the palms of an individual, to be worn on the side of a hand. What an amazing time we're in. And yet we're in the middle of another change, motivated not by technology, but truly because of a physical condition that we are being challenged by. So we have to keep asking ourselves, how do I process life through this change? It's, we are pretty much professionals at adjusting to change. But our adjustment has been with technology. This time, it's actually dealing with something that is physical. But in both cases, the reality is it's not only physical, it's not only social, it's not only emotional, but it is also spiritual. So the case study that we're studying, and I hope that this narrative, this story, will grip our lives. And I hope that all of us will never forget the story of Nehemiah. So far, what we have been saying is, Nehemiah had to align his purposes with the purposes of God. The number one thing that we have to be looking at through this new normal is asking ourselves as we go through these changes in our lives is, have I come to a place to understand that I understand the purposes of God so that I can align my new normal so that it adjusts to the purposes of God? There were two things that Nehemiah, in these first four verses of the first chapter, brought to our attention. And his concern was Israel, 
the people of Israel and the city of Jerusalem because it was the people that made the difference and they were a called community set apart by God with a purpose to reveal the glory of God. Now the city of Jerusalem was the place where the world looked at the city and God's people lived in the city and the city revealed the glory of God. And so when you look at it and you recognize it, what God was doing with the people of Israel was taking a dark world, bringing light into it, allowing them to become the light in the midst of darkness and revealing himself through their lives. And Nehemiah asked the two questions, what's happening to the people? What's happening in Jerusalem? And he realized neither of these were lining up with the purposes of God. And he was broken on the inside. And we were saying that what we need to do is come to that place in our lives where we begin to look at the purposes of God, lining up our lives with God's purposes and allowing God to actually look at our lives and for us to say, God, minister to me. And in a deep emotional way, we may to get to a place where we are weeping, where we're sitting down, we're fasting, we're praying, and we're coming into a restored relationship with God himself. The second thing we said about Nehemiah and the whole process of realigning ourselves and adjusting ourselves to the new normal is he spent time with God. It wasn't just a day or two. It was months and months that he spent time. In fact, from the time his brothers came to the time he went back into the presence of the king, as recorded at the beginning of chapter one, there were four full months. And all through this time, I'm not saying he didn't go to work, but I'm saying that he spent time with God. He prayed, he wept, he fasted, he counseled with God, and he reached out to God and he said, God, you're an awesome God. And what God began to do in his life is the rest of the story. And what I want us to remember is, if we are going to prepare ourselves to the new normal is, we understand God's purposes, we align ourselves, we spend time with God, and then God begins to work in our lives. And when we ended last week, we said, now my sin, I am the cup bearer. God give me favor as I go into the presence of the King. This morning, what I want us to do is to spend time understanding how God really enabled the process of opening doors that Nehemiah thought would never possibly happen. So before we move forward, I'm going to ask Malini to read us the passage of scripture. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to actually Nehemiah chapter 2, and what we're going to read are the first eight verses of Nehemiah chapter 2. And Malni will read it for us. Nehemiah chapter 2 verses 1 to 8. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the twentieth year of King Artaxus, when wine was before him, that I took the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had never been sad in his presence before. Therefore the king said to me, Why is your face sad, since you are not sick? This is nothing but sorrow of heart. So I became dreadfully afraid and said to the king, May the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad, when the city, the place of my father's tombs, lies waste, and its gates are burnt with fire? Then the king said to me, what do you request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. 
verse 5 and i said to the king if it pleases the king and if your servant has found favor in your sight i ask that you send me to juda to the city of my father's tombs that i may rebuild it then the king said to me the queen also sitting beside him how long will your journey be and when will you return so it pleased the king to send me and i set him a time verse 7 furthermore i said to the king if it pleases the king let letters be given to me for the governors of the region beyond the river that they must permit me to pass through till i come to juda and a letter to asa the keeper of the king's forest that he must give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel which pertains to the temple for the city wall and for the house that i will occupy and the king granted them to me according to the good hand of my god upon me let's pray and ask god to minister to us this morning and so father we pray because your word is your word it's powerful it's sharper than any two edged sword i pray that you would allow us to let your word speak to our heart and father that you would use it to touch our lives we ask this in jesus name amen now journey with me in this narrative as we try to understand what's happening in nehemiah's life i just ended up the summary of our messages in the last two weeks to say nehemiah is getting ready to go into the presence of the king and he is asking god god i know you have a plan for my life i know you have ministered to me over the last 4 months and i know i have a new normal that has to emerge but i am the cup bearer i'm not going to get loose very easily you need to do something that i would have favor before the king so that the king will really open the door for me so that i can actually cut loose and accomplish your purpose of restoring life in jerusalem restoring the city of jerusalem rebuilding the spirituality in the lives of people building the economy so that the economy in jerusalem is back alive restoring the morality that has been lost and bringing back worship into the temple that has been built and neglected lord if those things are going to happen and i'm going to be your instrument you're going to have to do something incredible were the words of nehemiah when he said to the lord lord help me find favor before the king now the majority of us are going through this journey and we're beginning to wonder how am i going to actually live through this new normal and you're realizing that you have a purpose and god's purpose for your life has to align up in such a way that your life can make a difference in the life of those that are around you i don't have a prophetic statement to say what's going to happen but i should tell you this that i have for years been praying god would you help us to really restore the new testament reality that families would be gathering in their homes to worship you and you know we have that opportunity and the new normal should be that we are worshiping maybe we're doing it very unstructuredly some of you i know are very structured you get up in time you turn on your computers and your phones and you gather together to listen to the church service at 8:30 in the morning others of you are very differently discipline you make the opportunity to sleep in and take your time and turn on your device independently maybe corporately but you're doing it at your own pace but maybe the new normal should say god we're going to gather together daily and we're going to worship together daily and what used to be your family prayer maybe needs to become a daily time of worship and slowly as we learn the skill of studying the word of god 
of actually meditating on the word of God, of applying it and internalizing it, God will probably open that door and you'll be able to gather people in your home all over again. Now I want to tell you that there are many people in our church that are gathering together using Zoom and as a result of using Zoom, they're actually having cell groups. I know that our teachers from the children's church gather together in that way. I know that there are other cell groups that are gathering together in that way. And I want to encourage some of you to continue to think about, maybe I can't gather in person, but maybe we can through Zoom and other devices such as WhatsApp. People are gathering and praying on a regular basis every day between 3.30 and 4.30. The women in our church are praying. That's a new normal. And I want you to think that God is going to make us rethink how we live our lives and begin to ask ourselves, have I settled in for a hopeless way of living or have I chosen to say I'm going to make the best of it and in this new context, I'm going to look and develop a new normal. And I think it'll come when you align yourself with the purposes of God. You spend time with God. You let God begin to minister to you. And then God ministers to your heart and he begins to put something in your heart. And when he puts something in your heart, you then say, Lord, open the doors for me to see that happen. Now, chapter two is about that. This first few verses that we have read in chapter two is about Nehemiah kind of throwing up his hands and saying, God, I'm available. I'll do whatever you want me to do, but you got to do something. I need to find favor with the king. And he goes into the presence of the king. And the story is, as you followed Malini, as you read it, the story is the king looks at him and says, Nehemiah, what's wrong with you? You look sad. Your face is not the way it normally is. He's a happy man. He walks into work and he's an excited person, I think. And what I think, the king is looking at him and he's saying, normal, this is not you, Nehemiah. Nehemiah, this is not you. I'm not convinced this face that I am seeing is a face of sadness. Tell me what's wrong. And Nehemiah says to the king, King, would you be a happy man if your city that you grew up in, the walls are burned down? There's no security in my city. Would you be a happy man where you grew up and the graves are turned upside down? Would you be a happy man? And he, the king looks at Nehemiah and says, Nehemiah, what is it that you want? It's amazing as you look at this story and you look at this narrative that Nehemiah is almost like, excuse me, you are actually asking me the right question. But it's almost like he's saying, I'm not prepared. And the next statement says, and he asked God. Isn't that an amazing thing? He didn't choose what he wanted. He said, God, would you speak to me? Would you tell me what is it that I need? He knew that God had a plan. He knew that God was going to take him back to Jerusalem. He knew that God was going to utilize him as an incredible instrument to restore the purposes of God. He knew that God was going to restore Jerusalem. He knew that God was going to use him to reconcile people with one another. He knew that he was, God was going to actually use him in a way to absolutely build the wall of Jerusalem, bring back security, bring hope, and actually bring back the glory of God. But he didn't know how it's going to happen. And he said, God, you're going to have to absolutely work on my behalf to make it happen. And when the king said, what is it that you want? It was like, I am unprepared for that question. And I won't tell you, that's what's going to happen to you and me. And I'm hoping that as we go through the series and we look at the life of Nehemiah and the narrative of Nehemiah, that you will begin to realize that God is going to use you. He's repositioning us. He's seeking for us to align ourselves up with him. He wants us to get into communion with him, spend time with him. And if you haven't started spending, please spend time with God. Let him speak to you. 
His Spirit is within you. And if it was anything that we have learned from the teachings of the Apostle Paul is God delivered us from the dominion of darkness. He's transforming our lives. He's changing us, bringing us into the kingdom of God. And under the authority of God, he puts his spirit into us. And when the spirit of God is within us, we have the privilege of communing with the spirit of God. Don't expect him to speak through your years. He's on the innermost part of your being. And he wants to commune with you. And church, I want you to consider making time so that God can do it. And when he makes time and he puts his plan and his purpose and his vision and his strategies into your heart, you know what's going to happen? Your life is not going to be the same. And he's going to make it clear to you exactly how he wants you to function. And then you're going to realize, I need some doors to open and you're going to come to a place where you realize in your life that God is going to actually open some doors. God is going to do something incredible for you and you are going to see God do some things that are so unbelievable but you have to come to that place where you have spent time with God and then you begin to realize God I'm available, but you need to help me find favor. And then when you go into the presence of the king and God begins to open those doors for you, show you how he can make things happen, you're going to grow in the greatest way of trusting God to do the impossible. So here's Nehemiah. The king is asking him, what is it that you require? What is it that you want? What is it that you're going to need? Nehemiah is totally unprepared. And when you get to that place in the journey, don't be afraid. Just stop, just like Nehemiah, and ask God. Learn to talk with God. That's why the Apostle Paul says, pray continuously. Pray without ceasing all the time. Be in communion with God. Learn to hear the voice of God. Learn to know the voice of God. Because Jesus says, my sheep will hear my voice. Because they know my voice. And when you come to that place in the journey with God and your relationship with him, the question will be, instantaneously, you know the voice of God. If you haven't developed that discipline, just develop it now. Take the time. Take the time every day. Sit in solitude. Sit in silence. Not only talking to God, but absolutely listening to the voice of God. Developing the discipline to control your mind, to shut all other noises out. And then in absolute silence, sitting in the presence of God and saying, God, speak, Lord, for your servant heareth. And all of a sudden, you'll begin to hear it. And once you learn that voice, once you know that voice, almost simultaneously, like Nehemiah, while you're in the presence of the king, you're talking to God, you're asking God, and instantly he says, here's the answer to my question. I used to think, and he used to say, he said, he said, time out, king, I got to check this out. And I would say, he went out, came back in, and then told the king, my God, he could not have done that. He could not have walked away from the presence of the king. But you know, he had developed a relationship with the eternal God. And he knew the voice of God and he could commune with the spirit and the spirit of God in such a powerful way that simultaneously multitasking while he's in the presence of the king, he talks to God and God tells him exactly what he wants. And church, you're going to get to that place in that journey. And God's going to minister to you and you're going to learn to live 24-7 in communion with God. The question is, are you using this time to develop that discipline? Like I said, there was a girl in our young adults that's spending so much more time studying the Word of God, understanding the Word of God, not from the superficial, but actually looking at meanings of words in her devotional time so that those words and all of the various definitions that they have in the context of various times in history 
what it meant to the Jews, what it meant to the people in the Greek or Roman world, all come alive when we make the choice to say, I'm going to spend time with God. I'm going to build that discipline of understanding what the Word of God really means. I'm going to be in solitude with God. And church, this is the time for us to begin to develop those disciplines and start asking God, God, I want to hear that voice and I want to commune with that voice anytime, all the time. Just like the Apostle Paul who said, pray without ceasing. And that's what Nehemiah was able to do. And the day is going to come, you're going to be in a situation and you will learn to pray without ceasing. And when you come to that place, you'll say, Lord, speak to me. Teach me how to do it. And he'll show you. And as you read the narrative, you hear Nehemiah responding to the king. And he's telling the king, King, I need letters from you. I need for you to ask all these people to clear timber. I need to do the front end of the temple. I need for you to send your troops with me. And I need empowerment from you. And, you know, it's an amazing thing. About this time, it appears like the queen is in the presence along with the king and Nehemiah. And the queen looks at Nehemiah and says, how long will it take you? In other words, hey, you're the cupbearer to the king. We can't let you go. You really need to be able to tell me how soon you're going to be able to do that. And Nehemiah said, as soon as it's over, I'll be here. I'm not running away. And you know, God's going to place you in that same situation. Some of you are going to say, I want to be a full-time employee serving the Lord 100%. I don't want to be engaged in doing a business. And God may call you to do that. We've had calls from people who are already speaking to us and saying, Pastor, I want to be in full-time ministry. And God will call some of us to do that. But others of us, he's going to say, stay in your job. Do your job, be a light in the midst of darkness, be a professional and do exactly what you're doing, but line up my purposes with your purpose so that your life is lined up with the purposes of God. Learn to hear my voice by developing the discipline of spending time with God so that you know God's plan, purpose for your life. And then, in the context of your job place, ask God to open doors for you. And you know what happened to Nehemiah? The king looked at him and he said, you got it, boy. Get on the way. And Nehemiah was on his way to Jerusalem. My friends, this morning, you may be thinking, I'm locked up, I'm shut down, I can't go anywhere, I can't do anything. This new norm, I do not know how to embrace. And I want to say to you, the bottom line to any change is breaking traditions to accomplish the vision of God. Some years ago, I had the privilege of writing a book and the title of the book ended up Breaking Traditions to Accomplish the Vision of God. And God had to break me. God had to break me to understand that my plans were not his plans. I wanted to be an evangelist. I wanted to be a pastor. I wanted to be a theologian. I wanted to be everything other than what God wanted to me. And then God said to me, you know what, Bobby, I want you to do? I want you to be involved in my mission. And my mission is about making the knowledge of the glory of God accessible to every man, every woman, every boy, every girl by establishing worshiping communities everywhere. And you know, it took me a long time to understand everything that God wanted me to understand about it. But you know, he walked me through that journey and I began by planting the first church and I realized I wasn't going to be able to do that. And then I began to realize it's not theological education, but it's actually developing men and women of God who would take their lives and say, well, no matter where I am, in whatever context, I will serve the Lord and I will develop the worshiping communities. And today I'm beginning to realize that it has to become a lifestyle. It doesn't matter whether you have a building, it doesn't matter whether you have a sanctuary, whether or not you are gathering in what we call a church building. But we, the body of Christ, has come to a place where we recognize the day 
we confess that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, we have become part of this new community. And it's not a building, but it is people that confess that Jesus is the Christ. And what God wants us to do is to look at the new normal and say, how can I become God's instrument? And how can I look at God and trust him to open up doors for me? And what are these doors going to look like if God were going to use me in the most powerful way? And the day you say, Lord, I will align up with you and I will join you in accomplishing your mission. And you begin to spend time and let him minister to your heart, change the way you think, you'll watch him open doors, even close doors that appear to be impossible to penetrate. God will open them. Church, use this time to let God to prepare you. But make a choice that you're going to line up your life with God's purposes and spend the time with God so that God can begin to do it. And then as you go into the presence of the new normal, watch him open doors that you've never seen before. When I turn loose to God and said, God, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. God began to change me. He began to change the way, the strategies I have. He didn't give me one strategy. He took me from training people in the formal context and he began to help me train people in a very abnormal way of letting people live where they are and train them at HBI, send them back within 10 days. And you know what? This movement began to train me how to train people. And consequently, they ended up planting over 12,000 churches and reaching over 8 lakhs of people. Can God use you? Yes, he can. But let me tell you what happened. Once I got trained and God began to change me and I began to understand it's not about formal training. It's not about being a pastor with an ordained identity. It's about realizing that every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that has confessed that Jesus is a Christ is the priesthood of Jesus and realizing all of them can become God's most powerful instrument. And when I began to do that, and equip and train people anywhere and everywhere. You know what happened? God began to multiply far more churches in our country. Today around the world, God took people as a result of the 1974 Luzon Congress and everybody left that Congress, went back to their nation, began to learn how to align their life up with the purposes of God. God began to change their strategies and the 200 years of missionary effort began to be renewed, revitalized, and a new perspective was born. And today, there are churches, millions of churches everywhere, because people were willing to line up with God. This is a great time for us to begin to ask God, God, what do you want me to do? How can I be your instrument? And God may not want you to leave your job, guys. But I want you to understand what he may want you to do is to make changes in your life. Changes that says, Lord, you are number one. You are my authority. I will follow you all the days of my life. Come into contact with your, his spirit inside of you and learn to listen to his voice. Learn to take the word of God and study the word of God during these days and learn to understand it in a way that it'll transform your life. And then allow God to empower you and open these doors. He opened them for Nehemiah and he will open them for you. He will not only open the door, he'll provide the resources, he'll enable you and you will listen. As we go through this narrative and watch how God brought life back into Jerusalem, you will begin to learn that all the things we've done in the past may not be the right things, but they were necessary for us to be where we are today. But what God wants for tomorrow is far greater. The question is, are you willing to be part of what God wants to do? Are you going to settle and say, I'll build myself a delicious home and stay outside of the city? God wants to invite you into his city. He wants to invite you into his mission. He wants you to become part 
of the restoration of his people. And he wants to allow us to revitalize every home in New Calvary Church, every home around the world, in our world that follows Jesus Christ so that every home becomes an instrument of God. The question is, am I willing to change? Am I willing to align up with God? Am I willing to build that relationship so deeply with Father that I'm willing to hear His voice and that He's willing to change me and I'm willing to so change and watch Him open up doors that are closed so that I can be His instrument in His mission and watch the city of Jerusalem come alive. What would it take for you to actually make those changes and allow God to work through your life. Church, we're going to pray in a minute, but can I ask you to take some time to meditate on what we're saying about the life of Nehemiah, about the narrative of Nehemiah, and begin to ask yourself the question, how can I become part of God's mission? Line up with Him. Listen to his voice and watch him open some doors that I think are closed that will never be used and watch him allow me become a Moses to lead Israel out of bondage or a Babi Gupta to multiply churches by breaking traditions or to be an Apostle Paul who was killing the church to becoming the church and multiplying the church so that all of his world had an awareness of the gospel. God is only interested in one thing, reconciling the world to himself, restoring the image of God in which we were created and for us to have a vital relationship with him so that the glory of God will cover the earth as the water covers the sea. Church, will you choose to make that decision to let God align ourselves with Him, have a relationship with Him, and watch Him do the miracles that He's going to do so that you can be His instrument in fulfilling His mission. Will you pray with me? And so, Father, this morning, we thank you for Nehemiah and the life of Nehemiah. And the fact that Nehemiah made a choice to say, God, I'm not going to let the rubble continue. I'm not going to let the city be the way it is. I'm not going to let the Jewish people live in disgrace and disarray. But Lord, I want to be part of what you're doing. I want to be disturbed completely. And Father, I cannot continue my life the way it is. And I want my life to count for eternity. And Father, that we would begin to spend time with you during these days when we're locked out. And that, Father, we would allow you to minister to our heart in a way that we come to know you. We come to know the power of your resurrection. And Father, that we will trust in you because you're putting a vision, you're putting a strategy, you're putting a methodology into our heart so that we can line up with your purposes. And in the context of this new normal, Lord, we want you to help our church to become alive. And so Lord Jesus, will you open some doors for us? And Father, as our church prays and asks you to help us, will you speak to us, Lord Jesus? Speak. For we are your servants and we want you to hear us. We ask this all in Jesus' marvelous and mighty and precious name. Amen.